Hello, people. I've been uh, asked by a lot of folks to explain what this little box was. Uh, the, the hydrogen system on the truck. Simple the electronics. Uh, it houses all the electronics for the system, such as um, these are the outputs that go directly to the cell. Uh, we've got high quality inputs that come directly off of the battery that are fused via a 50 amp fuse um, right here. It powers everything from this junction on. Um, buried down in here, there's a shunt that plays the role of uh, uh, giving me uh, what I need to uh, provide an accurate reading to the digital ammeter mounted in the in the cab of the truck. Uh, I've got an ammeter mounted up front here. It's mainly the only reason I put it there was uh, it's handy to if you're under the hood working on it, you can see how many amps the system is drawing. Um, just a little light that tells me the system is on. Uh, this is a switch that simply provides an override function for the circuit that powers um, the pump, the solenoid shutoff, and the time delay relay uh, for the uh, mechanism that maintains the level of electrolyte in the cell. Uh, the reason for the time delay is in the event that you hit a bump, um, the last thing we want is for the pump to pump distilled water into our cell if the level is is at its uh, at its uh, area where it should be, uh, a few bumps and you could be pulling water up into here. And the last thing we want is to draw water back through into a bubbler. Uh, and be sure you have a bubbler. Incidentally, uh, this is just a solenoid, old nitrous solenoid. It's a stainless steel solenoid. Works really well. Uh, that ties into this because what I found is without a mechanism to lock out um, your reservoir where your distilled water is to your cell, your cell will draw, it will draw the water into itself it's just by a low pressure area probably from um, uh, the vacuum from the engine. So you want to have a way to shut that off if you're wanting to maintain the level um, accurately. And the time delay just prevents every bump from activating the pump. So it has to maintain activated for uh, approximately five minutes before it will energize the circuit to allow the pump to come on, which energizes the solenoid and allows the cell to actually come up to level. Um, what this is, is just transmission oil cooler. Uh, works extremely well to cool the reactor down. And what I have found out is uh, around 20 to 25 amps is about all you're going to want to try to safely pull for any type of dependability factor on your vehicle. And with a good electrolyte level, once you um, start getting in excess of 120 to 130 degrees, it begins to draw quite a bit more amperage. A lot of people have tried to address this with a pulse width modulator or some form of a rheostat to uh, uh, try to vary the voltage to the cell. Uh, but in doing so, we tend to decrease the amount of hydrogen that the plates can generate. Um, so what I found is just by running this uh, circulator pump, which is no more than a 12-volt pump, it's a very low amperage. It says 4 amps and draws less than that. But it's 1 gallon per minute, so we're not pressurizing this system and moving a whole whale of a lot of fluid, but simply circulating it into an extremely efficient cooler. Um, uh, uh, we'll fire this thing up. Now, I guess we have to have a key to fire it up, so we'll take the key, put it in the ignition here. And this is just a safety device, by the way, to prevent um, a lockout. Uh, uh, the system is wired into the oil pressure switch on the vehicle. The vehicle has to be running in order for the system to even come on. But in the event I want to be able to lock the system out, I can. Or I can turn it on and engage it, and it would operate through the um, through the engine oil pressure switch. This is bypassed just to simply simulate bringing the system on. You can see it's generating quite a bit. 
um, we're up around 18, 19 amps. Now, if we were allowed to let this cell, you know, our charger just went up, uh, come up to operating temperature, uh, we'd see the amperage probably jump up somewhere around between 25 and 30 amps. And I can live with 20 to 25. 30 is a little bit high. Um, so what I'm going to incorporate is um, probably based on temperature to bring on the pump, and it has to run less than a minute um, to drop the temperature in the cell down approximately 22 degrees. Uh, extremely efficient. Um, we haven't been running very long. I don't, I'm really not sure how much this will do, but we'll try to simulate and give you an idea of what I mean by um, just removing some heat from the cell. We're drawing around 16, 17, 18 amps, somewhere in there. And we're just going to bring the pump on. Now, as you can see it flowing, it's not, you know, creating a huge, and we don't want, you do not want a high-pressure pump going through your cell. Now, this sounds extremely noisy, but it's mounted straight to a piece of plywood. Uh, there'll be rubber cushioning bumpers on the vehicle. And you can see it's generating quite a bit of hydrogen. Uh, now, if you'll look at the amperage now, we've already dropped this thing down to around 13 amps, and that's with the pump. The point in case is we can regulate for maximum hydrogen output, we can regulate the temperature of the cell to maximize the amount of output that we can generate without taxing the system. Uh, any ideas? Uh, 